Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome to your third responsive design tutorial and in this video I just want to introduce you to the viewport. Wow. Alright, so what is a viewport? Well, essentially a viewport is the size of the window you're viewing your website on. And on desktops that size is easy to see, it's just the size of your browser, right? And that can be the full size of the screen or you can shrink your browser. The portion of that browser that you're viewing the website is uh, in is essentially the viewport on your desktop. On mobiles, however, it's not so obvious. For example, um, a mobile screen could be about 360 pixels in width, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the viewport on the browser that you use on that mobile is going to be 360 pixels in width, even though it seems that way, like the browser takes up the full width of the, um, the mobile screen. It's not always the case. Okay, now most mobile brow browsers by default have a viewport of over 800 pixels so that static unresponsive websites that were originally intended for desktop can be viewed in full on mobile devices. All right, so this has the effect of then kind of squashing the desktop content to fit onto the 360 pixel screen and then that's why everything seems really small when you're viewing unresponsive websites. All right, so for example, mobile Safari um, that's the browser on iPhone, has a viewport of about 980 pixels in width. So this is the viewport there, right? But the mobile device is only about 320 pixels in width, right? So if we want to view all of the content in this viewport, in this mobile Safari app, then what we have to do, or what the app does, is squash all of that content. It doesn't cut any off, it just squashes it all onto the mobile device so that everything's really small. So in order to get around this, we kind of have to override it using the meta viewport tag. I'm going to talk about that later, but for now, I just want to show you an example of this thing in action. All right, guys, so I'm on thenetninja.co.uk, and what I've done is just uh, right click and go to inspect element. I've got up this um, kind of device view here. This is on Google Chrome Canary if you want to download it and go along with me and do the same thing. Uh, you can see at the top, I've selected iPhone 5. So this is displaying an iPhone 5 view. And you can see that this is very much like the desktop view. If I just click to this tab, this is a desktop uh, view. I've made it a little smaller, but this is roughly, look, 1,252 pixels in width, okay? And we're essentially getting that view on the mobile device. You can see it's pretty much the same, yeah? Not quite, but pretty much. Let's just do this a little bit more. It's round about that view there where this drops onto two lines. This looks the same as this, right? except that this is tiny, this is all really small. And if you were viewing this on a mobile, it wouldn't be much good because the links would be too uh, small to click or the text too small to read. So it's not a great experience on mobile. So that's what it's pretty much done the mobile by default. It's taken this content right here. So the viewport must be, I don't know, 1,100 pixels in width or something like that. And it's taken it and it's squashed it into the dimensions of the mobile phone, which are these dimensions right here at the top. Okay, so that is the default behavior of the viewport on the mobile phone. Now, no matter what responsive CSS I've done, if we don't override that default behavior right here of the phone to give it a smaller viewport, then it's going to look like this. Now, if you can see on this tab, this is what it should look like on mobile. Everything's much bigger. It's laid out differently. You scroll from top to bottom and it's more accessible for people on mobile. You've got to drop down navigation as well. And the way we've achieved this is by overriding that default viewport so that it is now the device width. And the way we've done that is by using the meta tag viewport. If I scoot back over to this one, you can see here, I've commented that viewport meta tag out so it's not having an effect. We're not overriding the viewport. So we're still getting a, um, a relatively wide viewport, which is squashing everything up onto the mobile device width. However, on this one right here, I've got that viewport uncommented. And what I'm saying is give this content the width of device width. Now we're gonna talk about this a little bit more in the next lesson uh, where we start coding up our HTML. But I just wanted to show you an example of this viewport in action. So this is the default viewport for a mobile phone where it's quite wide and then it squashes the content down. And this is an example where I've specified a specific width for the viewport using this meta tag so that our responsive CSS can change the design for this kind of width. 
Okay, so we've reduced the viewport to this width right here. So now everything is not squashed up or anything like that, and we've designed it so that it's really accessible for mobile users. Okay, so that is the viewport in action. In the next lesson, we're just going to go in and we're going to talk about this tag a little bit more and how we can control it. So I'll see you guys then.